So Doi Luang Chiang Dao, one of Northern Thailand's most iconic mountains and a place that you should put on your to-do list if you ask me. So if you're anything like me and you go to Chiang Dao and you see this majestic limestone mountain sitting there right next to the town, one of the first questions you'll ask yourself is, can I get up to that mountain? And the answer to that question is yes. So yeah, getting up to mountains is something I enjoy for some weird reason. Um, when I went to the south, to Patalum, there's also this very iconic outcrop uh, of a mountain just sitting right next to the town. I also went up there and with Doi Luang Cheng Dao it was exactly the same. Uh, the very first time I saw it I immediately wanted to get up there. So before we get into the details I just want you to have a look at this trailer. It'll definitely get you excited for a trip up to the mountain and it'll also leave you just enough time to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. So yeah, enjoy the trailer and we'll get into the details right after. the base camp yay okay so as i said Doi Luang Chiang Dao, it's a really amazing and iconic mountain and many people want to make their way up there but things have been complicated a bit ever since the mountain was recognized by UNESCO as a protected biosphere. So rules have really been tightened and you can't just you know get a guide or hike up the mountain anymore. There's a whole procedure you need to go through. So I have made some uh, timestamps, some chapters that you can skip through, uh, but I would suggest to watch the whole video from the beginning to the end because it's really a step-by-step -step procedure and if you miss one of the steps you're not gonna be able to make it up the mountain. So make sure to follow the whole video. The first thing to do is go to the Facebook page of uh, the Doi Luang National Reserve, the, the government entity that looks after the mountain and the surrounding area. So you want to go to that page, follow the page, uh, like the page, just make sure that you get all the updates that are posted there in your feed because they may publish some very important information throughout the year. For example, there have been years that the mountain has not been open at all, for example during Covid, but there also have been years when there were, for example, big forest fires that uh, the authorities decided to just close the mountain and not let any visitors up there at all. So um, all those kind of informations will be published on the Facebook page. So for the most recent and the most updated info, that's the go-to source, I would say. But a total closure of the mountain is pretty rare and usually um, the mountain will be open for visit during the cool season. So the cool season is roughly beginning of November till the end of February, so around four months a year. However, in recent years, ever since it was uh, designated as a protected area, um, it's only open from the beginning of November till the end of January, so only three months. Again. This information may change, but I expect it to stay the same for at least a couple of years to come. Uh, whatever the case, again, the Facebook page will have this official announcement uh, about when the mountain will be open for visit. So as soon as you know that, try to plan around that period, the three months that it's open, because um, yeah, you'll have only very limited amount of time to actually lock in your trip to the mountain. 
So you follow the Facebook page, you know the time of the year that it's open. Um, now you will still need to keep an eye on the Facebook page because that's where they will post the dates that the booking site is open. So there is a website, it's accessible throughout the year, but the booking module will not be available most of the year. Um, on the Facebook page they'll post when the book booking module will be online and that's when you need to go to that website to lock in your queue. The number of spots are limited to 100 people per day. So in this three month window they'll only allow 100 people go up the mountain every day and the program is also fixed. So in the past you could go for three days and two nights or you could go up and down the mountain in one day. That's no longer possible, now it's a fixed package of two days and one night that you're gonna spend up the mountain. So you'll have a calendar with spots and you can see which spots are still available. And the tricky thing is this window to book is very short. So for example, this year the mountain was open to visit from the 1st of November to the end of January and they only opened the booking module in the last week of October for five days only. So that may seem very short uh, as a booking window, but just to give you an idea how popular hiking to Doi Luang Chengdao is, all the weekends they were booked out in the first day that uh, the module was open for booking. So yeah, you have to be quick and you have to also be ready to commit right away. Uh, it's not that you can just book a spot because maybe you want to go to Doi Luang. No, you have to give all the details of all the participants you're going with, so name, passport details, everything. And you will also need to make a payment right away because otherwise you will not have secured a spot. So yeah, this is pretty um, stressful and uh, it's a very short amount of time to commit to going up the mountain, but uh, it's the only way now that you can secure your spot. So the actual booking, that's where it gets a bit confusing and complicated and it's not very straightforward. So basically you'll see a whole list of fees that you need to pay and a lot of choices that you need to make. So there's a number of mandatory fees, uh, fees for the cleaning of the mountain, for the staff, for um, yeah, training session that you will need to attend and so on and um, yeah a whole lot of fees that you have to pay but then there's also a couple of optional fees or fees that depend on which choice you'll make for example are you going to bring your own tent or are you going to rent a tent will you drive from the headquarters to the trailhead in a join-in car will you join with other people or are you going to privatize your own vehicle to get there um, like all those things are, are things you will need to decide on then and there so um, we'll go into the details a little bit more but uh, just to say that you will really have to have thought about your trip while you're making the booking because afterwards it's basically all more or less set in stone so what choices do you need to make um, as I mentioned first of all you need to get from the headquarters to the trailhead which is an hour and a half drive in the back of a pickup truck and only five people are allowed per truck so if you're going alone then you'll have the choice to join together with other people but if you're four or five people or you just don't want to spend time with other people then you can also privatize the truck so that's a choice we'll have to make You'll also have to think about which gear you have and which gear you want to rent because up the mountain there is no infrastructure whatsoever. So uh, the tented camp or the campsite is really as basic as you can imagine. There's only just tents and provisionary toilets and that's it. Nothing more, no running water, no electricity, uh, no shops, no nothing. So you need to take everything. Um, I would recommend that you rent a tent and a mat 
because th those will be waiting for you up the mountain. They'll be ready and booked for you as you arrive at the campsite. If you have experience with camping and you have some camping gear like sleeping bags, cooking gear, stove and so on, you can also bring those because they'll have to be carried up the mountain anyhow. But if you don't have those, you can actually rent those. But it's important that they will not be waiting for you up the mountain, they'll be waiting for you at the headquarters. And we'll get into why that's important uh, just in a bit. While you're booking, you'll also get information about the possibility of using carriers. This is also an important topic, so because there is nothing up there in the mountain, you will have to make sure that everything gets from the valley up to the mountain. Your food, your water, clothes, whatever you need to survive one night on the mountain, you will have to make sure it gets from the town, from the headquarters up to the mountain. Now, that can be quite a lot of stuff and not everyone uh, may want to carry their own stuff. So there are porters available who will help you. Basically their capacity, if that's how you want to call it, is 20 kilograms. They can take anything between 20 to 30 kilograms. The fee for 20 kilograms is fixed and then if they carry more, it'll cost you 70 baht per kilo. So they'll help you to carry your stuff on the mountain if, if that's uh, what you need. If you've gone through the whole list, you ticked off all your choices, private vehicle, join-in vehicle, do you need a tent, yes, no, are you going to rent sleeping bags and stoves and things like that, yes or no. So once you've done all that, you get the summary, the total amount that you'll have to pay. And once you've done that, you've locked in your queue and you're good to go. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's a two day, one night trip on the mountain, but it's very important to know that you will have to be in Chengdao one day before, because there's also a mandatory information session the day before, and if you don't attend it, you will not be able to make it up the mountain. So it's very important that you keep this in mind. So the information session, as I mentioned, it's mandatory. When you uh, finish it, when you have attended it, you'll get this very cool, officially looking Doi Luang card. Um, it's a very important card, you will need it. Um, and you'll only get it if you attend it there in person. As it's mandatory and because it is so important, you may ask yourself what will be explained there. Well, it's basically just going through the whole trip and also the practical rules of what is and isn't allowed because again it is a protected biosphere recognized by UNESCO and there are a lot of rules to follow. Some are very reasonable and make sense, others are yeah, a bit more questionable but whatever the case you will learn all about it during this information session. Important to know is that it is all in Thai so uh, if you don't speak Thai, make sure that you have someone there who can translate or summarize. You'll get a leaflet, but still the actual presentation has a lot more information than you can find on that leaflet. But to summarize, what are the most important points? You cannot leave any trash on the mountain at all. So plastic and wrappers and things like that, it's common sense that you don't just leave them out in nature controls on this as well but it's not only plastics and stuff it's also um, biodegradable material for example if you take bananas you will have to bring the banana peels back down with you because bananas are not uh, endemic to the mountain so you'll have to make sure that they get back down uh, the same we bought some uh, kaolam like the sticky rice in bamboo perfectly biodegradable but you have to make sure you bring them everything back down because it's not something that is endemic to the mountain and that belongs in the protected biosphere so no trash uh, and basically you cannot or you should try to not influence the biosphere at all so this is where it gets a bit detailed and, and maybe uh, going quite far in my opinion uh, but for example to cook at night or in the morning you cannot have an open fire, you cannot make a small barbecue because that would create too much smoke and may disturb the animals living in the mountains. So yeah, uh, 
you can only boil food uh, so cooking soups cooking a pasta that's all fine but no open fires you can this is a good one you cannot brush your teeth and then spit out the uh, toothpaste because that will obviously also affect the grass the campsite and so on so um, yeah either you have to spit in a bottle or just uh, don't brush your teeth for two days um, I opted for the latter <laughs> I know gross but <laughs> and then another big thing is um, yeah what about uh, if you have to go to the toilet <laughs> because it is quite a walk uh, you'll spend the night up there so inevitably you'll have to go to the toilet uh, at least a couple of times I would say so yeah you're not allowed to pee in the wild um, you will get a survival kit before you go up the mountain survival kit and it contains biodegradable plastic bags and also little envelopes uh, and inside there's a, ki a kind of crystals and those are meant to be your pee envelopes if you have to go to the toilet for number one you do it in that envelope the crystals will absorb the whole thing and make it uh, kind of like a gel you can then close it down and you are expected to bring your pee back down the mountain as well um, if you have to go for a number two uh, then there will be toilets along the way in a couple of spots and also at the campsite it's basically a portable toilet you'll put your bag your biodegradable bag in there you do your thing once you're done close the bag and you throw them in a big waste pit so so yeah all pretty basic but in the end honestly it's not as bad as you may think there's a lot of rules but yeah just common sense make sure that you bring all your trash back down uh, follow the guidelines for peeing and then brushing and your teeth and so on. It's not a disaster. It's only uh, two days and one night. So yeah, in the end, in my personal opinion, it's worth it. But anyway, that will all be explained during this uh, meeting. They also go over the yeah the routing. So what will happen exactly? And then once that is done, you will have the opportunity to buy some things that you may have forgotten um, I don't know rain poncho gloves um, hiking shoes things like that but um, yeah once you've attended this meeting once you got your Doi Luang card you're good to go and then you'll have to present yourself the next day between 8 and 9 at the headquarters So at the headquarters this is another very confusing moment because you're excited to go up the mountain but it's not as simple as that so you really have to go through a number of hoops so I would say yeah try to be there more towards 8 rather than 9 because otherwise you'll leave quite late um, but basically the morning that you're going to go up the mountain you'll have to go through six different spots where you will have to uh, do different things before you leave to the trailhead and start your hike. So the first spot is showing this card together with your passport, your name and your booking confirmation and they'll check that you have booked and that you have attended this meeting. So again without this card you cannot get up the mountain. That's the first stop. The second spot is uh, where you pay the entrance fee. That was pretty straightforward so you just pay uh, according to how many people and so on. Number three is where you will get your survival kit, remember, with uh, the peeing envelope, the plastic bags. And um, that's also where you pick up any stuff that you may have rented. If you rented uh, sleeping bags, cooking stove, things like that, that's also where you will get it. And then step number four, this is a big one, this is where you will have to basically unpack your whole thing and it's where they're gonna make an inventory of all the stuff that you will need to bring back down down the mountain so it's pretty detailed but not foolproof they're gonna look, go through your stuff every little cookie every plastic spoon every bottle of water every banana every whatever that they don't want you to leave up the mountain they'll write it down they'll make an inventory you'll have to pay 500 baht deposit per person and then uh, 
after you come back if you can show all the things that you took up the mountain show that you've brought them all back you'll get this money back but this is yeah as you can imagine a pretty time-consuming uh, station the next one is number five and if you opt to carry all your stuff by yourself you can skip this one because uh, it won't be relevant to you but if you opt to use a porter uh, station number five is where they'll weigh your stuff so all the gear that you have uh, that you want the porters to carry they'll weigh it and then they'll write it down so that they'll know how much you have to pay the porters in the end so the, the fee for a porter just for your information is uh, 1400 baht that's a flat fee for up to 20 kilograms and if you go over 20 kilograms it'll be an extra 70 baht per kilo with a maximum of 30 kilograms. It's important to know that if you thought of maybe renting a stove or renting uh, sleeping bags or whatever because you don't want to carry them and you don't want to uh, make them count towards the weight that doesn't work because you'll pick them up at station number three and they'll be added to your weight so again if you have camping stuff cooking pots, a cooking stove, sleeping bags and so on just bring your own, it's a lot more comfortable, uh, it's a mistake that we made, we thought that this stuff would be waiting for us up the mountain and we'd save us and the carriers a couple of kilos to carry, um, that's not the case. So yeah, after weighing everything, after writing down the total weight, on to station number 6 and that's finally the spot where you can get onto the car, onto the truck, in the back of the truck and that's when you're off to the mountain. Getting up the mountain. This is an adventure in its own right, so it's about a one and a half hour drive in the back of a pickup truck. Uh, it's not super comfortable, uh, to be honest, but it's it's fun, it's an adventure. Um, there's some really nice views along the way. And then you'll end at uh, Denya Khat, which is the starting point, the trailhead. And it's the only route that's open nowadays. From that starting point, from the trailhead to the campsite, it's 8.5 kilometers. Um. The hike, honestly, it's pretty straightforward. You just follow a path. Um, but an important thing to note is that you will have to carry the stuff that you need throughout the hike because your porters, if you use them, they will not wait for you. So if you have water or food or things like that that you will need during the hike keep them with you don't give them to the carriers to the porters because they will not wait for you they'll just get your stuff and bring it up the mountain but the hike itself is pretty pretty straightforward you just follow a path there are a number of rangers or staff or whatever you want to call them uh, and they'll kind of like move everyone along but they're not your personal guide so that's also important to know and you'll basically go in groups everyone goes together uh, and there's there's staff looking after everyone but not for you uh, personally if you would happen to end up without a staff and then you you're interested in nature and so on this is, this is something I like a lot there's 28 spots with QR codes that you can scan and you'll get lots of information about yeah everything so that's a very good point and so 28 spots along the way all the way from the starting point to the top so um, yeah available offline no worries it's a pretty good system but yeah then you just hike 8.5 kilometers depending on how fast you go it'll take you anywhere between uh, two hours to maybe five hours just take your time it's not super difficult my five-year-old son did it all by himself so that should tell you something don't be scared of the hike just take it easy and for sure you will make it uh, to the campsite and, and depending on what time you'll arrive there you can just relax and hang out a bit but then definitely a must towards the sunset make your way up to the top it's another less than a kilometer but it's pretty steep so this is something to to be aware of if you're yeah if you're not comfortable going up steep slopes you may really need some time to get up to the to the top but it's 
really really worth it the views are amazing make sure to not miss the sunset and the sunrise they are one of the most beautiful places in all of thailand if you ask me definitely also take your time to go back down the mountain because it will be dark by the time that you make your way down you'll need a headlamp you'll need that anyway because again there's no electricity at the campsite and then yeah just cook up a simple and nice dinner enjoy try to go to sleep um, yeah it's not the most comfortable night uh, if you would rate it in terms of stars I don't know if you would get any stars but talking about stars if you step out at night oh my god there's just stars everywhere you could see some shooting stars it was absolutely amazing really uh, yeah I almost get goosebumps just uh, thinking about it so enjoy the night enjoy the night skies try to get some sleep The next morning uh, get up early again before sunrise to make your way back up to the top because again it's not only the sunset that's beautiful the sunrise is also super super beautiful maybe even more so than the sunset so um, yeah the thing is this time you'll have to make your way up in the dark and by the time you get back down it'll be light so that's, uh, that's a bit easier to get back down <laughs> And then basically you have to leave the campsite no later than 10 but then you can just go back the same way that you came going down is obviously a bit faster than coming up it's basically exactly the same thing but in the opposite direction you hike back to the trailhead the pickup truck is waiting for you there and they'll bring you back to the headquarters and you would think that that's the end of the trip and you go home with uh, great memories but no unfortunately you of course have to First, uh, get your luggage out again and they're gonna check the whole checklist and... For me, honestly, it was a bit of a, a weird ending to an amazing trip uh, because you have to kind of go through your garbage and, and oh yeah, here's another bottle and here's a, a used cup of, of noodles and, and yeah, it's not the most uh, fun experience to do. Um, but yeah, I understand they need to keep the mountain clean, they put the nature first, which is great. After the, doing that, you get your money back, you pay your porters and um, that's it. That's really everything you need to know. I think, yeah, it's a lot of information. If you need any more information, just leave a comment. Uh, maybe there's some things that I overlooked or, or some things that are not clear. Just leave a comment and make sure to reply to you with good info. If you made it all the way here, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And um, yeah, see you soon for more videos. Cheers guys!